Today, we'll talk about one aspect of running your applications in Kubernetes, auto-scaling. As the popularity of Kubernetes has grown, the community isn't the only thing that's scaled up. You also need to think about how your applications will scale. Today, we'll look at auto-scaling your applications in GKE. I'm Kazlyn Fields, and I'm a developer advocate here at Google Cloud, where I focus on Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, as well as open source Kubernetes. And today, we're going to take a closer look at the auto-scaling capabilities of GKE. At some point, you've probably been in a situation where you've had to think about bin packing. Bin packing is the concept of packing items inside a confined space in order to use the space most efficiently. The same concept applies when you're running applications on infrastructure. You want to use your infrastructure resources you're paying for, such as CPU and memory, as efficiently as possible. For example, here's a diagram showing a Google Cloud N1 Standard 16 compute instance with 16 vCPUs and 64 gigs of memory. The boxes coming from the bottom left of the graph represent workloads. You can see that around 12.5 vCPU of the 16 vCPU and 28.5 gigabytes out of the 64 gigabytes are utilized by these workloads. This means that there are about three vCPU and over 30 gigabytes of RAM on this machine that are not being utilized. Running machines that use these resources more efficiently would help you to optimize your cost. But figuring out which workloads will be run on which machines, and thus managing the utilization of your resources, can be quite challenging. Wouldn't it be easier if the platform you're running your application on could simply detect its required resource utilization and adjust accordingly? This is the concept behind auto-scaling. When using Google Kubernetes Engine, there are four types or dimensions of autoscaling that you should consider. Horizontal pod autoscaling, or HPA, vertical pod autoscaling, or VPA, cluster autoscaler, CA, and node autoprovisioner, or NAP. This diagram illustrates these scalability dimensions. On the top, you'll see autoscalers that relate to scaling your workloads, or Kubernetes pods. On the bottom, you'll see autoscalers that relate to scaling your infrastructure, or nodes. The horizontal pod autoscaler and cluster autoscaler, which are both on the left of the diagram, both deal with increasing or decreasing the number of something. In the case of HPA, that would mean increasing the number of pods running your workload to meet demand, or potentially decreasing the number of pods running your workload when demand is low. The cluster autoscaler can be configured to increase the number of nodes in your cluster to meet demand, or conversely, to reduce the number of nodes in your cluster so you're using your resources most efficiently during times of low demand. On the right side of the diagram are autoscalers which change the size of something. The vertical pod autoscaler, or VPA, on the top can help you set the best resource requests and limits for the workloads you're running in Kubernetes pods. The node auto-provisioner on the bottom can select compute instance sizes in order to most efficiently pack your workloads based on resource utilization. Together, these four dimensions of auto-scaling provide tools that enable you to run both the infrastructure of your workloads, as well as the workloads themselves, on your Google Kubernetes Engine clusters efficiently, with minimal configuration as your cluster's needs change. It's also important to mention that Google Kubernetes Engine recently introduced a new type of autoscaler called the multi-dimensional pod autoscaler. As the name implies, the new tool combines the capabilities of the horizontal and vertical pod autoscalers in order to provide a more streamlined and easier to use method to optimize the efficiency of your workloads running on GKE. Your usage of these four autoscaling dimensions will be a little different depending on whether you're using Google Kubernetes Engine in standard or autopilot mode. We dive deeper into the differences between these modes in GKE Essentials cluster modes. Be sure to check out that video for more details. While these various types of autoscalers can save you time and cost, 
configuring and understanding all of the autoscalers is still quite a bit to remember. GKE Autopilot mode provides a more hands-off approach by configuring the infrastructure components of Cluster Autoscaling for you. This means that when running Autopilot mode GKE clusters, you would want to focus on configuring any of the pod autoscaling options, and you would not need to worry about the cluster autoscaling dimensions. These autoscaling tools can help make your work easier and more efficient. They can also help you optimize your costs so that you're using the resources you're paying for most efficiently. Here are some additional resources which you can find in the description below that can help you learn more about optimizing your costs on Google Kubernetes Engine. The four dimensions of autoscaling in Google Kubernetes Engine play an important role when configuring your workloads to run efficiently on Kubernetes. With the concepts discussed in this video, we're confident you'll be on your way to building a GKE cluster that suits your needs. You can get started with GKE by visiting the Google Cloud Console and checking out the links below. And stay tuned for our next videos where we dive deeper into GKE topics.